here's a uh, another track unit built at a different scale. Hello, I'm James Ingram. This video was digitized from a 1992 videotape series named V9202. This is what we refer to as an optical type uh, automatic block system as opposed to a magnetic type automatic block system that we were looking at uh, previously. Instead of uh, magnets on the bottom of the locomotives actuating the track contacts, as was the case with the magnetic block, in this situation we have an electric eye, which is shown uh, here in the corner. Uh, the engine passes over this electric eye and actuates the eye control device which sets the block to the red state. The uh, I guess what you would call the heart of this system is the uh, eye control, which is this unit over here on the back corner of the block, which is made by APS Technologies, which makes this uh, eye control unit. In the uh, January, February 1992 issue of Garden Railways on page 62, they had a uh, product review of the APS eye control, which is shown here in this uh, photograph, which doesn't really show up on the camera, but that's the eye control. And uh, this is that very same exact unit that they tested. It's kind of being loaned to me to experiment with, courtesy of some of the Garden Railways people. And I've been uh, experimenting with this unit since January. APS has their own videotape I might mention. They have a videotape called, I uh, can't really read it, but take my word for it, Take Control of Your Railroad with Eye Control. That's their own videotape which has all kinds of demonstrations on it. And they ha also have two catalogs of their own. This is the uh, basically their product catalog and this is their Eye Control project book. So there's a whole bunch project book. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with this eye control. Uh, all, all kinds of things in addition to this. What I'm using it for is just one particular uh, situation that it can be used for where I'm using it for my own interest in uh, block control, but it has many other functions. The way this uh, eye is set up in this situation, it uses circuitry very similar to the uh, previous magnetic block We've got the same uh, on-off section as before, and back to the rear we've got the same slowdown section as before. And again we've got the same two uh, double rheostat type operation where the uh, rear rheostat adjusts the voltage back in the slowdown section, and the uh, front rheostat adjusts the voltage in the on-off section. What's different is instead of having the uh, track contact T1 which sets the block to red, as you remember with the magnetic unit, there was a track contact T1 here, which was set to block to red as the engine passed over it. That gets replaced by this electric eye, which gets mounted out in the track uh, just at the exit of the block. The eye would actually go out here in the layout so that an engine uh, exiting the block would set the uh, block to red by passing over the eye. Then this eye control unit here is what replaces the 1201 motor and the 1203 points for a sound. Now we're zoomed up a little closer on the uh, eye control unit to talk about a couple parts of that. This is the actual eye control unit. Uh, it has basically eight uh, connectors or eight connections on the top of it. The uh, top two on the upper left, which are white, uh, is where the wires for the electric eye itself connect into the uh, connect into the unit. These uh, this black and red one is the input power wires to the thing. It'll actually operate on AC or DC. I I operate on the same 16 volt AC that I do the uh, magnetic type blocks. The only catch to this unit is you need to use a separate AC power unit from your track power. If you uh, you can hook the right. Where you could hook this thing up to your uh, track power transformer, you tend to get a short 
due to the way this thing is grounded. So it's best, to, uh, best. Uh, in fact, they say almost necessary to hook this thing to a separate source of AC power, a separate pack other than the pack you're using for your track power. But at any rate, these red and black terminals are the AC input power. Now these lower set of terminals, a row of four lower ones, two green and two yellow, are the terminals that actually do the uh, track power operation. The way this thing works is it's, it's in a nor uh, the green contacts are normally closed and the yellow contacts are normally open. In other words, when the thing is either uh, not activated or it's depowered, the thing is not hooked in right now, it's not, not powered up, so it's in an unpowered state. Uh, in the unpowered state or the unactivated state when it's powered, these green two these two green terminals are connected together, normally closed. The two yellow terminals are not connected, i.e., normally open. Now, when the uh, eye control unit is activated, w which happens when an engine passes over the eye in the track, which effectively sets it to the red state, then these normally closed contacts go to open. In other words, the green contacts go to open, and the normally open yellow contacts go to closed and it'll stay that way for a set period of time. The uh, unit op basically operates on time delay. So just to review that a little bit, when the uh, block is effectively in the uh, green state, what we call the green state, uh, like the magnetic block, this optical block has a red state and a green state. When the thing is in a green state, when trains can pass through it, the uh, two green terminals are connected together in their normally closed position the two yellow terminals are open in their normally open position. Now when the eye control unit is activated by a train passing over the electric eye, then the block is in the red state and these green contacts change from closed to open and these two yellow contacts change from open to closed. So these are the ones we use for controlling the track. A couple other parts of the eye control to talk about while we're zoomed in up on it. There's two little uh, potentiometers down here on the bottom of the eye control. The uh, right one there, which is marked with an S, is a sensitivity, and you basically use that to adjust the sensitivity of the electric eye. Uh, basically what we've done is we just make it uh, as insensitive as we possibly can and still have it tripped by a train traveling over it, and then we pretty much forget about it. Once it's set, uh, we don't need to adjust that anymore. The, uh, the left of the two potentiometers marked with the T is for timing. Uh, this, the time delay on this thing is adjustable between one second and 200, and 200 seconds. And what I mean by the time delay is the amount of time that the thing will stay in the red state, or what I call the red state, the way I use it, when a train passes over it. In other words, when it's in the green position and an engine passes over the electric eye, it'll activate this thing, and this thing will go into the red state for a period of time adjustable between one second and 200, and sec 200 seconds. After that time period expires, the thing will go back into the green state and remain there until the electric eye is again disturbed or again senses a train passing over it. This switch on the left has a, a red and a green position. You can see it's colored red and green. Uh, we always operate it for block control purposes in the red position. What it does if you, if you operated in the green position, it connects the uh, input power to the output power. There's if you were driving something, you, you could use your input power in some instances, like if you were controlling lights or something, you could actually have the same power that controls the eye control uh, be delivered to the to the load or the unit to be driven, say if you're driving a, some kind of crossing lights or something that operated on AC power, you could use the same AC input power uh, to be your output power also. But in the case here where we're we're having AC input power and DC track power. We want to keep those two separate, so we put this switch in the red position. And for purposes of our automatic block, block operation, this switch never goes to the green position, always stays in the red position. Uh, one advantage of the, 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 I'll recap this later, but the, uh, the advantage of this eye control unit, it's not, it's not as controllable on block systems as the magnetic blocks because you're using time to approximate uh, position with this unit and you can't control it quite as precisely as the magnetic units. That's a disadvantage of it. Uh, the advantage of it, uh, one thing is it doesn't have any track contact T2. This time 
delay essentially replaces track contact T2. That's one advantage. The other advantage is we think it may be a little more resistant to outdoor weather, dust, dirt, whatever, than the, uh, than the mechanical parts. If you look at this thing closely while we were zoomed in on it, that's why I'm mentioning this now, what they do with this thing, they assemble it. It really has no external moving parts. It's all apparently electronics. Um, whatever's inside of it, which I don't know and I don't understand, I'm not an electronic person, but whatever's inside of it, when they get done assembling it, they just dip the whole thing in, uh, in a rubber coating, and that's what this black uh, compound is that goes up most of the way up this leg here. The whole thing has been dunked in a rubber coating to essentially make it uh, weatherproof. Uh, APS claims that this, this unit's going to be more reliable for outdoor operation than the uh, previous type units. And uh, although I, I can't verify this, I haven't operated it outdoors, their, their, their claim certainly seems possible. Uh, what they say as far as moisture, they, they don't want this thing immersed in water. And they don't want it being directly rained upon. But they say other than direct immersion or being directly rained upon, uh, weather doesn't bother this unit. And uh, you can see they've certainly tried to make it weatherproof. Let's discuss a few remaining items here. Uh, this has the same external AC power connection. Uh, again, you just uh, connect the thing to AC power. You hook up a, the way I've, I'm using it, you hook up a uh, Radio Shack RCA type speaker plug connector for AC power. So that's what this thing is, is AC power connection. Uh, this unit is built slightly differently than the magnetic blocks. You notice the magnetic block we were talking about previously was all on one unit. This unit is built in two pieces. Uh, one piece here is essentially what I call the control unit, then here is a track unit. And these things connect together just by what I'm using is uh, telephone type connectors. With a, with a simple connection of a telephone connector, these can be connected together. Uh, there was really two reasons why these were made separate like this. Uh, and it's not necessary, but the two reasons I chose to make them separate was one, assuming this might be used for outdoor use with this uh, quick disconnect feature by basically disconnecting this thing at the telephone connector here and removing the electric eye from the track, that this uh, control unit can be picked up and uh, essentially carried away. So for outdoor use, this thing could be taken inside uh, if desired in ba bad weather or something like that. And also for uh, weather protection, I've got a building. I haven't used it too much but for indoor displays, but Peter Kenneman built this. Uh, building. Peter Kenneman builds buildings. That's his specialty. But he he made this building for this eye control so he can cover this whole thing up to essentially get that stuff out of sight. Uh, so that'd be one way to cover it outdoors. This I don't know if this building, you might want to have some closed windows because rain could, this building does have windows and rain could go in through these uh, windows if you had a building like this outdoors. But at any rate, you can make some kind of a you know, a long, narrow building like this that would cover up your controls and just uh, keep them out of visual sight and also protect them from the weather a little bit. One more thing I need to mention is these two indicator lights. Uh, I always had like to have some kind of indication these units are receiving AC power. With the magnetic type blocks, uh, with the 5094 semaphore arms, you've got red and green lights in the semaphore arms, so uh, I know when, when the uh, semaphore arm is lit, the thing is receiving AC power. With this unit, uh, there's no semaphore arm, so this light here, the forward of the two lights, indicates the unit's receiving AC power. When this is turned on, this light will be lit. Uh, this red light, the second light, indicates the thing is in the red state. When this control unit is activated and this block changes from red to green, this red light will come on. When it times out and goes back to the green state, this red light will go off. Goes back to the green state, this red light will go off. Uh, the other thing, getting back to this disconnection, the, the first reason to make this thing disconnectable is you can just remove it and take it indoors. And the uh, other reason was the possibility of using it with other scales of, a, of equipment. Here's a uh, 
another track unit built at a different scale. Now you can see basically just making the same connection with that uh, telephone connector we've now hooked up a track unit for another gauge. Uh, there's no reason why this thing wouldn't, shouldn't work with other uh, trains that run DC power because this eye doesn't care what scale a train passes over it, whether it's HO scale or G scale or whatever, it's going to be activated the same way. So you could use the same control unit with a, another gauge. Uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't work with other DC kinds. Now I haven't checked this thing out yet with other type with trains using AC power in a track that may be a problem because this has a diode in its circuitry and that diode is going to behave differently with uh, AC than DC so I'm not sure how well this thing will work uh, as I've wired it for AC things but there shouldn't be any problem with other trains running DC power. Might make an additional comment about the, the uh, use of these telephone connectors. Originally I was using these Molex type connectors which are another form of a quick connector. These are supposed to come apart and go together fairly quickly. Uh, you can get these things from Radio Shack also or other other sources. Uh, these I had did have some problems getting these apart. Sometimes you get them together And they don't want to come apart real easily. Plus, you have to you have to assemble them, which is time consuming. And uh, rather than fool around with these, I just went with these things, which are ready ready made. You you buy these right out of the package at Radio Shack, and you you basically got a standard telephone connector on this end, and on the other end, you've just got the uh, four four spade wires. Now, somebody might make a comment. Uh, everybody's always talking about using heavy wire for power on LGB like you know 16 gauge and 14 gauge power and here I am using this very light wire you might uh, comment isn't that a little bit lightweight wire for track power uh, it seems to work fine as far as I can tell hooking it up and the other thing is uh, it's just used in this block section this isn't this remember this wire isn't powering the layout it just powers the trains that are in this uh, block so the main layout is not powered by these wires. Uh, plus, I'm using resistors to drop the voltage anyway. So, if we even, even if we do get an additional resistance drop due to these small wires, which I can't detect, but if we did, it really wouldn't be a concern because we're in uh, both parts of the block. We're drop using using rheostats to drop the voltage anyway. So, don't think this wire is going to be any problem.